areas with ambient light intensity with ambient light intensity only or we can combine the ambient light with specified surface textures specified surface texture So this can be seen in various ways. So what we have studied so far, we have studied about the one model. So one model, what, what it say? It say the one model provides a method for simulating studio lighting effects by controlling light intensity in different directions. Intensity in different directions is controlled by selecting values for the phone's exponent in addition light control such as barn doors and spotlighting used by studio photographers can be simulated in the Bond model and so on. So it is implemented in PHI GS plus. So here we are having the example this uh, the, the car suppose I draw a, a architecture like This architecture cannot have the real image. Actually, it is the projected from different sides and five light sources to eliminate a car which is actually simulated from the real one. Then intensity attenuation can say that like as radiant energy from a point light source travels through space, its amplitude is attenuated by the factor 1 upon b square. So this 1 upon b square is very much important here that, uh, uh, that can be uh, distance that the light has traveled. Then we studied about the function fd equal to 1 upon a0, a1d, a2d square and so on. So a, a user that can then fiddle with the coefficient a0, a1 and a2 to obtain a variety of lighting effects for a scene uh, can be can be related very easily. So what is the intensity attenuation with a given set of intense attenuation coefficients we can limit the magnitude of the attenuation function to 1 with the calculation. Fd is equal to minimum of 1 comma 1 plus a0, a1d, a2d square and so on. So using this function we can then write our basic elimination model as i is equal to this one where d is the distance light has traveled from light source i. So what is the color consideration? To incorporate color, we need to write the intensity equation as a function of the color, properties of the light sources and object surface. For an RGB description, each color is in a scene is expressed in terms of red, green and blue component. So what is the color consideration here? Here the diffuse uh, reflection coefficient vector for example would then have uh, RGB component KDR, KDG, KDB and so on. So KDR, KDG and KDB will be defined in various sectors. So if we want an object to have a blue surface, we uh, select a non-zero value in the range from 0 to 1 for the blue reflective component. KDV, the red green reflective components are set to 0. So this 
component can have the particular value like k, r, k, g, and k, b. So these are components, those are defined in uh, different aspects. So the red and green reflecting components are set to 0, then k, d, r equal to k, d, g. So what is the transparency here? Transparency can be seen from this figure that here we are having the transparency object and the particular object projected from uh, 90 degree normalized on the floor. Then the incident rays, incident rays and the reflected rays are impacted from the various side. So the realistic transparency effects are modeled by considering light reflection. So this light emission from a transparency surface is in general a combination of reflected and the transparent light. <coughs> so very much important point is to differentiate between this incident line and the reflected line. So this line is realistic transparency effects are modeled by considering light reflection. When light is incident upon a transparency surface, part of it is reflected and part is refracted. So light emission from a transparency surface is in general a combination of reflected and transmitted light. So this light can have the particular value. So what is the Snape's law? Then we studied about the this Snape's law, which is very much important here. So it says that angle of refraction theta r, which is projected from this side and uh, is calculated from the angle of incident theta i. It is the index of refraction and i of the incident material, usually a air, and the index of refraction and r of the refraction material according to this formula. So sin theta r is equal to n i upon n r sin theta i. So reflection direction r and the reflection direction p for a ray of light incident upon a surface with index of refraction n i, mu i. So I had already illustrated about the incident rays those are pointing from this point to another point and then reflection direction and so on. So to the light source we can have the refraction direction and so on. So from Snell's law, the, direct, the diagram uh, figure 14, 27, we can obtain the unit transmission vector t in the refraction direction theta r as t is equal to theta r n i upon n r upon cos theta i minus cos theta r. n minus theta i upon theta r l and so on. So a simpler procedure for modeling transparent objects is to ignore the path shifts altogether. In effect, this approach, there is no change in the index of refraction from one material to another so that the angle of refraction is always the same as the angle of incidence. So this incidence is going to impact in either way. So this approach assumes there is no change in the index of refraction from one material to another so that the angle of refraction is always the same as the angle of incidence. This formula can be defined like i is equal to 1 minus kt, i is equal to reflect and kt is equal to i terms. The term 1 minus kt is the uh, opposite factor and this diagram is very much easy to define that object background and the transparent object. So then projection plane, projection plane and the background object those are defined and perpendicular to uh, different from each other. So what is the shadow here? So the shadow is going to define in this section that shadow and the object incident light from the distance source and this, this can be defined. The hidden surface method can be used to locate areas 
where light sources produce shadows. So by applying a hidden surface method with a light source at the, at the time, at the view. So position we can determine which surface sections cannot be seen from the light source. These are the shadow areas. And then we can have the particular uh, aspects like once we have determined the shadow area for all light sources, the shadows could be treated as surface pattern and stored in pattern arrays. The scene shows shadow effects produced by multiple light sources. So we can display shadow areas with ambient light intensity only or, or we can combine the ambient light with the specified surface textures. So this is all about this transparency and shadow, color consideration, intensity attribution and the one model. So you know, we will meet in the next lecture. Thank you.